Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Tim, this is Vehicle Evolution, and today we got the doors. Vertical door insulation isn't difficult to do, but it does take a lot of time. If you're not comfortable taking your car apart, leave it to the professionals. You do have to remove your front bumper, your fenders, and all your inside door panels to be able to do this installation. The nice thing about this installation is it's completely reversible. You can go right back to the stock door setup pretty easily. Like I said in my last video, when I shot the install footage of this I didn't really have it in mind that I was going to be doing a YouTube channel. I just was playing around with it. So the footage was shot on an iPhone. It's not anything super spectacular, but it will show you how the installation was done. Okay, so if you've never looked at one of these kits or seen it or installed it, there's actually a video on their website. This is from Vertical Doors. There's a video on their website that really goes into good detail on how to install it. There's also, voila, handy instruction manual. Very helpful. Uh, make sure you read through that before you do anything um, but yeah all the parts are here we've got the hinges very beefy very very well engineered uh, we've got the, the struts for holding it up bolt package extra wire for extending the wiring harness for the door these are spacer plates that go into the little wells from where the old hinges were and some extra covering for the wires to keep them protected once they're extended Overall, very, very impressed so far with the quality of this kit. But we'll uh, get it put on and, and see how it all works. So far, from what I've seen, it's going to be pretty cool. So the first thing that we have to do here is fender needs to get taken off. The bumper is going to have to come off so that we can get to the bolts for the fender. And I think we can get away with doing this without pulling the wheel off, but we'll see. We might have to pull it off. Definitely going to have to turn it. Uh, the bottom side skirts down there, that whole section, has to be loosened to be able to get to some screws that hold the fender on as well. Uh, once the fender's off, this should go pretty smoothly. So before I do anything with this, I'm going to tape all of the edges around the, the fender and the door. And uh, probably, well, the hood's going to be up, but any area where there's a painted surface I'm gonna tape that and uh, just to make sure that as I'm moving things around I'm not scratching anything basically to remove the bumper, all you do, you're going to have to take out these four fasteners, these two fasteners, and then around the corner in the wheel well, there is this one right here, and these can stay because that'll come off with the bumper, and then it just pulls right off. All right, so those of you with a stock intake, this will actually go to your air box, and there's a piece here that you'll have to take off. Mine doesn't serve much purpose other than to direct some air into the, the ram air intake, because I put a ram air intake on mine. All right, so once you have the screws out, all you have to do is pull on this a little bit. It unclips. Just keep working it around. this side is a little different this side I actually have to I need to buy a new bumper which is coming here shortly because not too long ago I nailed a raccoon going down the road of course I was doing 55 but it 
busted up. My front scars, you see, I got some overspray here just from crap on the road. The car needs to be washed. But busted the front bumper here and actually tore out the whole inside part of the wheel well and it broke this off. So I might try and do a temporary fix today to get back on, but um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be putting a brand new bumper on here. Also, very important before you start doing any kind of electrical work on the car, that needs to be disconnected. Negative terminal on the battery, pull it off and leave it off till everything's hooked back up. So to take the fender off, we've got screws here, here, and here. And inside the wheel well, pardon the mess, like I said, it needs to be washed. Had a fastener here, screw here, screw here. There's also a screw up in here and one up in the front up here that needs to be taken off. And then we'll also take off this one and this one that will uh, should free up the fender. So there we are, fenders off, bumpers off, this side fenders off. Being totally honest, those side skirt areas are a pain in the ass to get out. We're going to disconnect the harness in there, and then we're going to take the factory hinges off and put the new ones on. Okay, okay, so up next is we got to remove the door panel. So you have two screws in here. One is buried down in there, and all you have to do is pry this up. Okay, one screw. The other screw is right behind there. So we'll take this screw out. And we'll take this screw out. is held on by clips so hopefully this comes off a lot easier than that side skirts did all right so the panel's off harnesses are disconnected but this is the uh, door opening handle mechanism which doesn't just disconnect so I'm gonna unscrew those two bolts there and just take this off so I can pull the panel away. Now we got to remove factory hinges. There, there, there's the electrical boot. Got to pull that out and uh, disconnect the harness. And then I'll put the, uh, the new hinges on. All right, so I have the door connector out, disconnected. And the instructions say, I don't know if you can see in there, this rubber loom, I have to cut it in half, and then this should actually pull free long enough to work the doors without having to add extra wires. At least that's what the instructions say. We'll find out though. All right, so next, got to tape the doors. Keep them in place while we're doing all the hinge work.
right, so now we have spacers that have to go in here and up here. Now it looks like we're ready for the actual vertical hinge. So ought to be interesting. So you have to cut the boot out and pretty much expose the wires, but they give you stuff to cover it all up. And I'll probably use some black silicone around it just to hold it in place, make it look nice, finish it off once it's done. But otherwise, with the boot in there, there's no way the, uh, the hinge actually fits. So right now I'm just loosely fitting everything in. All right, there's the hinge. Bolt there, 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 back there, and two bolts there. Definitely tape it or else you'll fuck up your paint. Um, there's gonna be a hole here. I have to drill that one and put it in. And then the, uh, the strut goes here and up here. And that'll be the next thing. But before I do that, I'm going to take the tape off the door and we're going to check the mechanism and make sure it um, the door latches properly so no adjustments are needed. So interesting turn here. This bolt right here, they actually say needs to be Loctited and greased. You know, the inside Loctited, outside greased. But they've already put it in place. And it clearly has grease. I can see it coming out here. So it looks like all we're going to do is take the shock, thread it into here, and then lift the door up so that it goes into there. But I'm pretty sure we need to Loctite that, so that's what I'm going to do. Before we can close everything up the wiring harness is fine with the exception of about eight wires here that are way too short to be able to make this all work so they actually include extra wiring harnesses or extra wiring pieces in with the uh, kit so these are all going to be cut and a new wire spliced in place to extend this out once it's extended out it only needs to go a couple inches and then I can wrap it in the black sheathing and uh, we'll be good to go. As you can see, doors on, everything fits good, opens up good, fenders on. Now the fender, that was probably the biggest pain in the neck of this entire job because to make the new hinge fit, you actually have to cut away part of the inside of the fender. And I'll show you on this side and today I'll film it so that you actually see what needs to be cut. But in here, that plastic piece comes out and then back here from here from here all the way up to here gets trimmed down almost even with the fender well so that the fender fits back in properly otherwise the door won't open but yeah that's probably the only pain in the neck part of this So that's the install of the vertical doors. To put everything back together, just do it all in reverse. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. There's a lot of cool stuff still coming with this car. Next thing's going to be blacking out the headlights. There's going to be a body kit most likely coming shortly and some other cool stuff. So please subscribe. But that's all for me now, guys. Until next time, take it easy.